Hello everyone! So in this video, we are going to recall the different terms and basic concepts in statistics. So what is, is statistics? So it is a collection of methods for planning experiments, obtaining data, data and then analyzing, interpreting, and drawing conclusions based on the data. So when we say collection, it means that it's a process of gathering relevant information from the population. And when we say obtaining data, that is about organization of data. When we are going to uh, arrange our data into tables, graphs, or charts. And so the, and so the logical and statistical conclusion can easily be derived from the collected information and analyzing also we're going to analyze the data we gathered so it is the process of deducing relevant information from the given data so that numerical description can be formulated and lastly the last uh, process in statistics is interpretation so this is about deriving conclusion from the data that have been analyzed. So, it also involves making predictions or forecasts about large group based on gathered data from the small groups. What are those basic terms in statistics? So, first, we have the data. So, data are the values that the variables can assume. A variable is a characteristic that is observable or measurable in every unit of universe or population. So when you say variable, like for example, uh, you conduct a survey, you ask the student information, for example, their, uh, the number of their siblings, their height, their weight, uh, their sal uh, annual alo daily allowance rather, so that is a variable. Next is a population is the set of all possible values of variables. So when you say population, that is a set of all possible values of variable. And sample, this is a subgroup or the subset of a population. So we have a different method in uh, identifying our samples. So we can classify variables into two. So first, that is qualitative variables. So when you say qualitative variables, that is words or codes that represent a class or category. So for example, uh, and also express a categorical attribute. So for example, gender. So you can uh, categorize like male or female. Religion. Marital status and the highest educational attainment. So, uh, the ana another classification of variables is quantitative variables. So, what is quantitative variables? So, it is a number that represents an amount or account. So, it also a numerical data, sizes are meaningful and answer questions such as how many or how much. So, for example, the height, weight, household size and number of registered cars or the number of student in a class so that is an example of quantitative variables quantitative variables classified as discrete variables so when we say discrete variables that is a data that can be counted so kaya mong bilangin so for example the number of days number of siblings the usual number of text messages sent in a day and the daily allowance in school. The another, uh, the other one quantitative variable is the continuous variable. So when you say continuous variables, it can assume all values between any two specific values like 0 0.5, 1.2, and etc. And data can be measured. So for example, weight, height, body temperature. So uh, para mas madaling tandaan, kung malilito kayo sa discrete and continuous, pag discrete, that is countable. So, pag continuous, so it is uh, necessary na magkakaroon ka ng decimal. Okay? So, we have a levels of measurement. So, 
what are those? We have four levels of measurement. First is the nominal level. So this is characterized by data that consists of names, level, labels, or categories only. So like for example, no, like for example, gender, most preferred color, your usual sleeping time, and the uh, civil status. So this is an the other example of the variables measured at the nominal level include your gender, like uh Yes, the marital status, religious affiliation. So, for the study on the validity of the statement regarding effect of breakfast and school performance, students who is responded yes to question. No? This is an example of nominal levels. Okay, another is the ordinal level. So, when we say ordinal level, this involves data that arranged in some order, but differences between data. So, from the word order. So, like for example, the happiness index for the day uh, in rate of 1 to 10. So, what is your happiness index for our, uh, a particular day? So, highest educational attainment. So, pwedeng hanggang college degree. Or pwedeng high school lang or elementary lang. Another is the ranking of tennis players. So, meron tayong first place, uh, second place, and third place. And also the Academic Excellence Award. So, when we say Academic Excellence Awards, so meron tayong with highest honors, with high honors, and with honors. Interval level, so when say interval level, this is the same in ordinal level with an additional property that we can determine meaningful amounts of differences between the data. So like for example, the body temperature and the intelligence quotient. So when you say the intelligence quotient, it is what? Okay, we can tell not only which person ranks higher in IQ, but also how much higher he or she ranks with another. But zero IQ, that does not mean no intelligence. So the students could be classified or categorized according to their IQ level. The last level of levels of measurement is the ratio level. So this is the highest level among the four. So this is an interval level modified to include the inherent series starting point. So, it tells us that one unit has so many times as much of the property as does another unit. So, when you say the ratio level, it possesses that what? Meaningful, absolute, fixed zero point, and allows all arithmetic operation. So, like for example, the number of siblings, weight, and height. So that is an example of racial level. We also have the four basic methods of sampling. The, so this is the four basic methods in choosing our sample. So first is the random sample, sampling. This is the easiest way. No, ito madalas nating ginagamit. Okay, this is done by using chance or random numbers. Like for example, yung drawlets na ginagawa ng teacher kapag may graded recitation that is random sampling systematic sampling this is done by numbering each subject of the population and then selecting nth numbers so like for example in one community so uh, let's say uh, in arrange mo by numbers yung uh, isang community let's say meron yung 1000 uh, population and then ang kukunin mo lang respondents is yung every 10th number dun sa population ng community na yun. So, ang kukunin mo na yung every 10, 20, 30. So, next is stratified sampling. If a population has a distinct groups, it is possible to divide the population into these groups and to draw SRS or the stratified random sampling from each of the groups. And lastly is the clustered sampling. This method uses intact groups called clusters. So, kapag Malaki na yung, uh, malawak yung, um, malawak yung sakop ng research mo. So, therefore, we are using cluster sampling.
Okay, so I hope you learned something from me today. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button para updated kayo for more video tutorial. This is your guide in learning your math lesson, your WOW Math channel.